Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Fankert. This is part 18 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about editing and updating data in Grid View using Object Data Source Control. Let's look at the steps that are involved. So obviously the first step is to create employee data access layer. Look at this in the grid view control. We are retrieving and displaying employee related information. So obviously to retrieve and update that employee related information, we need employee data access layer. So let's go ahead and add that to our project. So right click on the project, add, and then I want to add a class file. And let's call this class file as employee data access layer.cs, click add. Now look at this, since we are representing employee related information, to encapsulate that information we need a business object, employee business object. So create employee business object in employee data access layer. So that's going to be our second step. And obviously this employee object is going to contain employee ID, name, gender and city properties. Because if you look at the table, those are what are the columns and to represent those column values, we need properties in employee class. So let's go ahead and add them in employee data access layer uh, .cs file. So I'm going to call my class public class and let's call this employee. And just to speed things up, I have typed uh, the properties already. So let's copy them and then paste in the employee class. So if you look at this class, it's pretty straightforward. It has got an integer employee ID property and then name, gender, and city, which are all of type string. And all of these are auto-implemented properties. So that's our second step. So what's our third step? Add a static method to select all employees in employee data access layer. So basically now we need a method which is going to connect to the database, retrieve these employees, and then return them back to whoever is going to call that method. So let's go ahead and add a method to employee data access layer. So public, it's got to be a static method. And this method should return a list of employees back. So the return of my method is going to be list employee. And I'm going to call this get all employees. And this method is not going to take any parameters because we want to select all the employees. All right. And again, to speed things up, I have that ADO.NET code already typed. So let me copy and paste that. And obviously, uh, we need some ADO.NET namespaces to get rid of these compilation errors. So we need system.data. So let's import that using system.data. We also need system.data.sql client. And finally, system.configuration namespace. OK, now let's look at the code within this get all employees method. If you look at this, the return type is list of employees, meaning it's going to return a list of employees back. So what are we doing? The first line creates uh, a variable of type list employee because we want to return list employees back. And, the, and this line here is reading the connection string from web.config file. Using that connection string, we are building the SQL connection object. And then look at the SQL command that we are preparing. Select star from TBL employee. We are going to retrieve all the records from TBL employee table. And then open the connection, execute the command. OK, and then look at that. We are looping through each row that's retrieved and then converting the database row into an employee object. And then finally, adding that employee object to the list that we have. Once we are done looping through each row and creating and adding that employee object to the list, finally, we return that list employees back to whoever is going to call this method. So that's our third step. Fourth step, we need now, look at this, when we actually edit a row, you know, we can change name, gender, and city. And once I click update, we need a method which is going to update, you know, employee details by passing in all these four parameters, employee ID, name, gender, and city. Okay, so we need a method which is going to update employee details, you know, by passing in these four parameters. Okay, so let's add that static update method to our employee data access layer. So it's going to be, again, another static method. So public, static, and the return type is going to be void, update, employee. And obviously, we need to pass four parameters. That is the employee ID, name, gender, and city. And just to speed things up, I have this again typed. So let me copy and paste it there. We'll go over that code in a bit. 
Okay, so I think we have the method outside the class. So let me copy that and paste inside the class. So that's our class. So that's the get all employees. And this is the update employee method. So if you look at this, obviously this method has got four parameters, employee ID, name, gender, and city. And then obviously here, the first line is reading the connection string. The second line is creating the SQL connection object using that connection string. The important thing to notice here is the update query. Update TBL employee set name is equal to at name, gender is equal to at gender, city is equal to at city, where employee ID is equal to at employee ID. So obviously, this is a parameterized SQL query. So to avoid SQL injections, we're using parameterized queries rather than building the SQL queries dynamically by concatenating strings, which is very dangerous, which could open doors for SQL injection attack. Okay, so obviously now since this is a parameterized query, we need to supply values for those SQL parameters. And that's what we are doing in these lines here. So we're preparing the SQL command object using that um, string update query and then we need to since we need to supply values for those parameters we are actually creating the parameters look at this this is the SQL parameter and this is the value for that SQL parameter so where is this value coming from it's coming into this method as a parameter so obviously when we click this update method these values these four values will be passed into this update employee method which in turn will be associated to these sql parameters and that's what these two lines are doing here so the first line creates the parameter object the next line adds that parameter object to the parameters collection of the command object and we do the same thing for gender city and name and finally open the connection execute the non query so simple adio.net code here so we are done with the fourth steps. The final step is to basically configure object data source and grid view control. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So let's flip to web form. Now first let's compile the project and then let's drag and drop a grid view control onto the web form. Let's auto format that. Let's choose brown sugar scheme and now let's drag and drop object data source control. Let's configure data source so choose your business object or business object is employee data access layer present in a demo namespace. So demo dot employee data access layer. Click next. Select your select method, which is going to be get all employees. That returns a list of employees back. And then we also need to specify the update method. So let's click on the update tab and select your update method. Look at the parameters. It has got those four parameters that we specified. That's it. Click finish. We are done configuring object data source. Now let's associate this to the grid view control. And look at this. The moment I associate this object data source control to the grid view, the grid view has detected that this object data source control has got update command. Okay. As a result of which, you know, it shows this enable editing method, uh, you know, checkbox. So let's check that. So you have the edit button next to every employee data row. Let's run this when you know the web form renders obviously it has to display the employee data with an edit button next to every employee data row. Now let's click edit. Look at that. You know, employee ID is also editable. But look in the slide. We don't want employee ID to be editable because that's the primary key. And it's unusual to change primary key values. We don't want users to be editing that employee ID. So we want to render it in read-only mode using a label control. So how do we achieve that? It's very simple. All we need to do is set the employee ID bound column read-only attribute to true. So within the grid view control, you have these bound fields which are displaying, you know, basically, uh, the employee ID name, gender, and city. All we want to do is the bound field, which is displaying employee ID, set its read-only attribute to true. So if this is the case, then when we edit that employee row, it's going to render employee ID using a label control. Okay, look at that employee ID uh, rendered using label control. Now let's change name of mark from mark one back to mark, and then let me update. Look at that. Is it updating the data? No, it's not. Why is that? That's because, you know, when I click this update button, what's happening is, you know, the employee ID is actually passed as zero to this update query. And then we don't have any row with employee ID zero. So no row gets updated. And we don't get an exception as well. 
okay so to understand that properly actually you can put a breakpoint and update employee method and then debug that and then watch the value of this employee id uh, it shows that as zero so how do we correct that all we need to do is set the data key names property so data key names is equal to employee id all right so with this change let's go ahead and run this now so edit and then let's change mark one back to mark update that look at that that's updated properly let's select the data from table just to make sure all right another thing here if you notice if i click edit look at this gender it's actually you know male female um, instead of displaying a text box there don't you think it's better if we actually display a drop down list we'll see how to enhance this editing interface in a later video session on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview question. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.